Uh, I rise to address the Congressional Review Act measure that we'll be voting on later today. Uh, let's be very clear, this is a vote, the purpose of which is to overturn a very, very important part of the tax reform that we passed in December of 2017 that made the tax code much more fair than it was before. And specifically, I'm referring to the limitations that we put on the ability of people to deduct state and local taxes. Um, let's remember what our tax code looked like before our tax reform. Wealthy individuals could deduct the full amount of any state and local tax deductions, however high they got. And we use the acronym SALT to refer to these state and local tax deductions. So why do I say that that's unfair? Well, it's unfair because it subsidizes people who choose to live in high tax jurisdictions. It does that because it lowers the tax bill of somebody who lives in a high tax jurisdiction like Manhattan or San Francisco because they get to deduct the full amount of the outrageously high state and local taxes that they choose to pay. Now the fact that they get to deduct that big number means the rest of us have to pay higher rates on our income than we otherwise would have to pay. So why should my constituents in Blair County or Cambria County or anywhere else in Pennsylvania, constituents with modest income who choose local governments that keep modest level of service and therefore a modest level of taxes, why should those constituents have to pay higher tax rates to subsidize the folks who have multi-million dollar condos on the Upper West Side of Manhattan? It's totally unfair. They certainly should not have to do that and may have no doubt about it. The huge benefits of this unlimited state and local tax deduction that we used to have always flowed to a handful of states which have chosen to have very, very high taxes. California and New York are two good examples. Under the old regime, about a third of all the benefits of the state and local tax deductions went to just those two states. Just California and New York, they had a third of all the benefits. Take New Jersey, right next door to my state of Pennsylvania. New Jersey has four million fewer people than we have in Pennsylvania, like almost a third fewer people, but they got more of the benefit of the SALT deductions than my entire state, and that's because New Jersey is a very high tax state. Well, guess what? It's a high tax state because the people who live there voted for politicians that raise their taxes. That's what they want, apparently. They want to have all of the services that go with that. They're happy with very high state income tax and local property tax. That's, that's their decision. I, look, if you want to vote for someone that's going to have, uh, impose exorbitantly high taxes on you, that you should be free to cast that vote. But don't expect my constituents to subsidize it. So, so that was the regime we had in place. Tax reform comes along and we said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a limit on the amount of state and local taxes that a tax filer can deduct. The limit's $10,000. It's not trivial. It's a lot of money. But that's the limit. If you pay more than that in state and local taxes, you do not get to deduct it. Well, in response to that, Mr. President, it's very interesting. Several of these high-tax states have designed a scam to get around the limitation that we imposed. The scam is they create this vehicle and then they have their taxpayers pay their taxes into that vehicle and call it a charity, call it a charitable contribution. The money then goes out of that vehicle and goes to the governments. It's not a charitable contribution at all. It's a transparent, obvious attempt to circumvent the law that we passed in 2017. So the IRS came along and said, well, this is, this is an obvious scam. And they developed a rule that shuts down the scam. It says, if you create this scam make-believe charity as a way to circumvent the cap on state and local deductions, we're going to disallow the deduction. So the IRS ruling shuts down the scam, maintains the deduction cap. And what my Democratic colleagues want to do right now is have a vote to invalidate the IRS ruling. In other words, have a vote to keep the scam. That's what the vote is today, to make sure that we destroy the IRS ruling and we keep this 
scam in place. You know, one of the ironies of this whole debate is our Democratic colleagues voted against our tax reform because they said that it was too much of a tax cut for the rich, despite the fact that, in fact, our tax reform shifted the tax burden from lower income taxpayers to higher income taxpayers while saving money for everybody. The relative proportion of taxes paid increased for wealthy people, decreased for low income people, while everyone had some savings. That was objectionable to my Democratic colleagues. And now they come along and they want to repeal the rule that shuts down the scam. They want to perpetuate the scam that is a massive giveaway to the wealthiest Americans. It's amazing. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, 94% of the benefit, if they had their way and prevailed on this vote, 94% of the benefit would go to people whose income is over $200,000. 52% of the benefit goes to taxpayers with income over a million dollars. So not only is it fundamentally unfair to ask people in some low tax jurisdictions to subsidize the taxes chosen by people in high tax jurisdiction, the subsidy all flows from low and middle income people to very, very wealthy people. That's, that's the deal. Millionaires would receive an average tax cut of $60,000. Taxpayers with income between 50 and 100,000 would receive an average tax cut of less than $10, not $10,000, $10, $10. So, Mr. President, what we did when we put a limit on the ability to deduct state and local taxes was a big step in making our tax code more fair. These states came along, developed a scam to circumvent it. The IRS quite rightly seized through the scam and said we're not going to allow that scam to continue. And now my Democratic colleagues want to tear up the IRS rule to perpetuate the scam. That is a very bad idea, and I hope we will all vote against the Congressional Review Act effort uh, that's scheduled for a vote later today. And I yield the floor.